Have you ever wanted to add automated processing to your bamboo farms to magically turn it into more useful things? Well, you've come to the right place. I'm your host, Om Ledoux, and in this video, we're going to string crafters together to automatically turn bamboo into stairs, slabs, chests, whatever you want to turn it into. We're also going to take a look at why bamboo slabs might actually be the best fuel source in the game. Best of all, I have two designs for you to choose from. One that is more compact, where you only obtain the final result, and another that has lamps and levers to allow you to toggle some of the crafters on and off. So if you want the blocks of bamboo, or the planks, or just the unmessed with regular old bamboo, you can lock that section to obtain that item. So if you want the power of options to occasionally grab some blocks or planks or regular old bamboo, you can build this toggleable version. Or if you know exactly what item you want all of your bamboo to turn into, you can build the compact version instead. And no matter what you want it to craft, if you want it to craft slabs for fuel or chest, pressure plates or stairs, the redstone will remain exactly the same. So you could always easily change what item it's crafting at any time. But before we build it, we need to talk about the efficiency of your bamboo farm. So each bamboo that is growing will produce about 11.5 per hour. One hopper can process about 9,000 items per hour. So if your bamboo farm produces more than 9,000 bamboo per hour, you need to switch it to double hopper speed so that it can process up to 18,000 bamboo per hour. And what double hopper speed is, is just two hoppers going into the crafter and then two hoppers coming off of the output of your bamboo farm. So that you have two hoppers pulling bamboo out of the farm and two hoppers loading into the crafter. And you want to maintain the integrity of these two separate hopper lines so that everywhere from the output of your bamboo farm to the crafter has two hoppers pushing in to two different things. Now, if this is confusing, just don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. The only reason we're talking about this first is that if you have a hyper-efficient bamboo farm, you can turn this machine sideways when you build it to save a total of two hoppers. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's basically irrelevant. And again, double hopper speed is only relevant if your bamboo farm has more than 800 bamboo growing in it. So... If your bamboo farm doesn't have 800 bamboo, you can just follow the tutorial and totally ignore this beginning section. But if you do have a big old bamboo farm, just keep in mind that you want two hoppers pushing or pulling from every single section from the bamboo farm itself all the way to the crafter. Nowhere do you want hoppers merging together or having just a single hopper moving items from a container into another one. You want two hoppers all the way through. And again, the only reason that we're talking about this first is that when you go to build it, you could turn it sideways to save like two hoppers. Plus, with this toggleable design, if you build it at double hopper speed without turning it sideways, it'll be more difficult to lock the bamboo hoppers. So if you ever want to grab regular old bamboo out of the system, you, it's nice to turn it sideways so that we can lock the frontmost hopper with the lever itself and then lock the backmost hopper with the block that the lever is placed on. Otherwise, it would just be more awkward to lock both sets of hoppers. But as we can see, the hoppers are locked. They're not pulling out bamboo. This front one is being locked because it's touching this lever and then the back one is being locked because it's touching the block the lever is placed on. And to reiterate, there is absolutely no benefit whatsoever to making this double hopper speed unless your bamboo farm is growing more than 800 bamboo. Now let's build the compact version that isn't toggleable. The last thing to keep in mind is the location of your output chest for your bamboo farm. We need to have at least one block of space above the bottom most output chest for your bamboo farm in order to fit the redstone. So like this bamboo farm right here has a single output chest 
at the same level as the farm. And that wouldn't work, because this dust right here would be right in the water canal. So if the bottommost chest of your storage system is already below your bamboo farm, you probably don't need to go down any further to make room. But if it's aligned with the farm, then just go down from the output chest by a hopper or two. We just need three blocks of air under the farm itself, regardless of where the output chest is. Then aligned with the output chest, we're going to place three crafters. Two facing away from the output chest, and a third pointed up. Then we just need to connect the output of the bamboo farm to this very first crafter. So just use hoppers to connect the output of the farm to the very first crafter. This first crafter is to turn bamboo into blocks, so don't lock any of the slots. The middle crafter is to turn the blocks into planks, so we need to lock all but one of the slots. And then the third one is whatever you want to turn the planks into. So if you want to turn the planks into stairs, make that pattern, into chests, make that pattern, or for slabs, you know, lock all but three of the slots. Just lock whatever slots you're trying to craft the planks into, regardless of what that is. Just make that pattern. And if you're confused about where to start, I promise it'll be okay. This is really simple and easy to move. But we need to place four comparators, one next to the first crafter, one one block away from the third crafter, and then two pointed into the sides of both of those. Then place another crafter next to that comparator, and lock all of the slots inside this crafter. All nine of the slots. Then place another crafter right here, also locking all nine of the slots. So this is what you should have. Now we're going to place solid blocks before this comparator, after it, and above it. Then another solid block above this comparator, so that we have this right here. Now we're going to place six dust. One dust on top of that crafter, on that block, and on top of that crafter. Then one dust on each of these three blocks over here. And that's it for the redstone. Super duper easy. All we need is an output chest on top of that crafter, so it can push the final item up into the chest. Then you could always add a hopper and more chests if you want to increase the storage capacity. If we toss in some bamboo, we should see it all a crafting. The bamboo into blocks, the blocks into planks, and the planks into whatever you told it to craft. And you can change what it's crafting at any time just by changing the pattern here in that third crafter. So if you want it to craft slabs, stairs, chests, you can change that at any time just by changing the pattern. But now let's build the toggleable design, starting again by making sure that the bottommost output chest on the bamboo farm is low enough under the bamboo farm itself to fit that dust right there. So again, this bamboo farm right here, its lowest output chest is aligned with the bottom of the farm, so we would need to lower that chest before we start. All we have to do to lower the chest is add a few hoppers pointed down underneath that chest. So if you're paranoid, just go ahead and add extra hoppers under your output chest to make sure that you have enough room. Also, if you want double hopper speed, remember to turn all of this sideways when you start. But we're going to start off by placing three double chests directly next to the hopper line or the output chest. Then on the side closest to the output of the bamboo farm, we're going to place crafters facing up into all three of these chests. Then connect the output of the farm to the first crafter by using a hopper, and place a hopper pointed into the side of each other crafter under the chests. Then behind the first and last crafter, we're going to place a solid block. Then place comparators looking at this solid block pointed away. Then place comparators pointed into the sides of both of these here in the center. Then place a crafter between these two comparators and lock all nine slots inside of this crafter so that it has a signal strength of a nine. So both of these comparators will now be turned on. Then place a solid block above and after each of the two side comparators, place dust on top of all of these blocks that you've just placed, 
and then place a solid block in between these two middle crafters with dust on top, and then an observer looking back toward the beginning, the output of the bamboo farm, at that first dust on top of that block. Then come around to the front, and we need to either place solid blocks or redstone lamps next to the hoppers, so that we can lock the hoppers to allow items to build up in the chest right before that hopper. The first section, you can lock any of those hoppers, and it would be fine. Also remember that you can replace hoppers with chests if there's a hopper above and below where that chest would be. Then we can just add levers to these lamps or blocks. That way, when we turn the levers on, it will lock those hoppers to allow items to start building up in the chest directly above those hoppers. And the lamps are just for visual aid, so that you know that that lever is turned on, so you know that that hopper is locked. So the bamboo would build up in this chest because we've locked the hopper that is pulling from that chest. But if we unlock that hopper, the bamboo will then flow through the system and craft blocks of bamboo. Oh, also remember this middle crafter, you need to lock all but one of the slots because it's for crafting planks. So the blocks will turn into planks, and then this final crafter will be whatever pattern you want the final product to be. So if you want slabs, lock six of the slots. If you want chests, just lock the centermost slot. Um, you know, so whatever you want the planks to turn into, make that pattern. And all we have to do to increase the storage capacity is add a hopper that is next to the final crafter underneath the final chest, and then just connect more chest and hoppers to that new hopper. Because remember that the crafter was poorly designed and it will poop its items on the ground if your storage system is ever full. But now let's talk about why bamboo slabs might actually be the best source of AFK fuel for bedrock. None of this applies to Java, but in bedrock, one wooden slab will smelt one and a half items. So two slabs will smelt three items. Compare that to planks and bamboo, and you'll see the difference. Like one bamboo smelts one-fourth of an item, you know, like nothing at all. Or one wooden plank smelts one and a half items, just like a slab does. So that means turning your planks into slabs gives you double the amount of smelting power that the planks would provide. Think about it this way. We can now grow and craft bamboo totally AFK. Nine bamboo is equal to four slabs. You can make four slabs using nine bamboo. Four slabs will smelt six items. So that means nine bamboo will smelt six items. And just think of how efficient bamboo farms are. They produce tons of bamboo. Bamboo is the fastest growing plant in the game. So to power a single furnace forever, where it's smelting 24 hours a day, we only need to have 45 bamboo growing, turning that bamboo into slabs. A furnace will smelt 360 items per hour, which means that we need 240 slabs per hour, which is equal to 540 bamboo, which we can get from any bamboo farm that is growing about 45 bamboo. And that's powering a furnace infinitely, how often do you actually have your furnaces smelting items? So 45 planted bamboo could power 10 furnaces if you only use those furnaces 10% of the time. Think about how much time you spend at your base versus how much time your super smelter is actually smelting items. Any time that you exist but your smelters aren't smelting, the fuel will be building up in a fully AFK manner. Or like the bamboo farm we built in the last episode. This grows 60 bamboo. That's almost 500 items smelted per hour after turning that bamboo into slabs. That would power 10 furnaces if you only use these furnaces 15% of the time. And the bigger the bamboo farm is, the more furnaces it will power infinitely. You know, something this size would power 10 furnaces that smelt 24 hours a day. Just remember that it's about 45 bamboo growing equals one furnace powered infinitely. So 450 bamboo growing would power 10 furnaces that smelt 24 hours a day. 
and all we have to do to power these furnaces is attach them to what we just built in this episode. Crafting the bamboo into slabs, and then just loading that into your smelting system. Either just by loading it directly into furnaces from the side, or loading it into a minecart to deliver it to the fuel of a bunch of furnaces. Or whatever custom style you're trying to do. You could use dropper elevators, shulker loaders, water streams to move the slabs to your super smelter. Now I would recommend building the smelter at the bamboo farm so that your bamboo is growing while your smelter is smelting in this nice infinite cycle. Regardless of the style or size of the super smelter you want to build, you could power it completely and fully AFK using bamboo. And it's one of the only ways that we can power smelters now in a fully AFK manner. Unless we like built our super smelter in the nether at a blaze farm or at a wither skull farm. You know, for the most part, we actually have to transport fuel to our smelter, be it lava, blaze rods, coal, kelp. Again, around 45 bamboo growing powers one furnace infinitely, smelting 360 items per hour. So just use that to determine how much bamboo you need, how many furnaces you want, and let me know down in the comments how big your super smelter is, how many furnaces is the right amount for you. And how often do you use those furnaces? But that's all we got for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Always remember that you are totally awesome. But above all, don't forget to have fun. Bye-bye.